today I'm talking about Grunt, uh, which is the JavaScript task runner. Um, I'm John Hobbs, at Jim Hobbs, I make a website for dogs, which is not as lame as it sounds, it's actually pretty cool. Um, it's called PAC. Uh, I'm also a watch here, I work with Alex. Um, so what is Grunt? Uh, Grunt is basically automation. Um, if you're doing something over and over again manually, uh, then you're doing it wrong. Uh, so you should use an automation tool. Um, so that's minification, compilation, uh, unit testing, uh, linting, uh, you know, obfuscation if you're into that sort of thing. Uh, so it's new make, see make, blah, 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 blah. All these other build tools that exist, right? Uh, so what makes it different? Um, well, it's Node, so you know, that's cool. Uh, <laughs> it's got a really nice plugin system, uh, which is handy. Uh, it's a, a real language. Um, could have took a stab there. Street cred. Uh, so that's how it's different. Uh, so the first step <laughs> is to get it. Uh, whoops. Get it. Uh, npm install dash g run cli. Uh, if you're a node user, you probably went, oh my gosh, global. Um, but that's not actually um, installing Grunt, it's installing a shim that um, calls Grunt so that you can actually use Grunt from deeper inside um, a project and it'll you know, work its way up and call Grunt properly. So getting it for real after you've done that, uh, in your project you want to set up your package um, and add Grunt as a dependency. Um, you can also do the npm install uh, and then the save dev. Um, and then you'll need a grunt file, which is kind of the whole thing that ties grunt together. And this is kind of an absolute minimum grunt uh, file. And, uh, you know, it's just an export and it's going config there. Oops. And I'm supposed to demo here. Oops. All right, so. Whoa. Way more readable now. All right, whatever. Um, so we've got our grunt file here. Uh, exciting, I know. And so if we call grunt, task default not found, uh, boarded due to warnings. That's because we haven't told it how or why to do anything. Um, so, real quick, uh, what is a task? So a task is uh, basically just a function, and you can do anything you can do inside of uh, JavaScript inside of a task. Uh, so here's a really cool default task uh, that just says, oh hi, uh, we'll show that. There you go said oh hi, and uh, done without errors. Okay, so that's cool, I guess. Um, but the really great part is the plugins. Um, most of what you could possibly want in Grunt has already been written by somebody else. Um, so that's good, because I'm lazy. Uh, so one of the you know, common things is uglify uh, your code to smash it down and get rid of comments and stuff. So you um, install grunt contrib uglify, uh, and then you load it in with this load npm tasks, and this is inside of that grunt, uh, grunt file.js. Then you register it as the default task, um, and you can have a chain of tasks there, but so you just register, register the first one there, um, and then you configure it. So remember that blank configure, init config that was in the um, first grunt file, uh, now we fill it out, um, and so you can kind of see how it's got a structure to it, um, where you say, so it's called Uglify, and you set some options, and then you have your source and destination files, and you can do um, lots of interpolation uh, and stuff, so like you could read in your package and you know, glob on all the JS files, or you know, however you want to do it, so you don't have to manually write out every single file, because again, that would be doing it wrong. Um, so each, each plugin has its own configuration options, and you'll have to you know, read their documentation to get it right. 
so. So here's the ooh. Here's the uh, grunt file um, with our config in there, and then we load the npm tasks from the module, and we reg register it uh, to do uglify by default. And when we run it, uh, so it it's going through, and it says uh, you know went through the Ugify task and minified the, this sum file. Uh, oops. So there's that, and then it, it went ahead and Uglified uh, and created that file for you. And every time you run it, it'll overwrite that destination file for you. So you can also uh, have it do a chain of tasks by default. Um, and you can, uh, you, you just, you've got an array there, and you do your plugins or your method function uh, names in order that you want to run. And there's, there's lots of, um, especially with like the, the core and trib um, plugins, there's a lot of uh, interplay between them. So like JS Hint has special options where you can set it up to um, run before on certain files before you can uh, concatenate them, or certain files after you concatenate them, uh, or after they've been uh, uglified, that sort of thing. So there's just the, it, we've got the JS hint set up in there, uh, so we're going to run the linter, and then we're going to run the uglify on that file. Um, and then the other thing is you can uh, run just one or the other at will, um, and that's as you'd expect, JS hint, grunt JS hint will do JS hint, grunt uglify would do just uglify. So now we're going to write our own really useful task. Um, Grunt has its whole own um, internal API and, and uh, odds and ends that you can use, um, especially for like reading and writing files, all that stuff. Um, our really, really cool task is going to be uh, Ermagerd uh, translator, automatic. Um, so step one is steal the hard part. Somebody else already wrote a uh, translator. And it's pretty good, so we're not going to bother walking through that. Uh, step two here is we're going to come up with our config. Um, and I've just got, uh, you know, again, the, the function's name is Ermagerd, so that's what the option set starts with. And then I've got a source and destination file. And then this really dense uh, would look better in... Too many C's. <laughs> I heard that. Yeah. <laughs> uh, all right. So, um, basically, I stole that code and put it into a module called, or you know, file called Ermagerd that exports a translate method. Um, and then uh, what I'm doing here is grunt register multitask. So up here we registered a single task, um, and these can also be task aliases, um, which, I mean, like default is a task alias. It's not actually calling a method specifically, it's calling this chain. Um, register multitask is uh, used in plugins a lot because you can define um, option groups, or not option groups, they're words escape me, but so here I've got build source desk. Underneath I could also put, um, you know, test source desk, uh, you know, as, as dictionaries there, and I could run those independently by prefixing my call with the name of the section I want to run. Uh, is that opaque or did I, are we okay? Huh? 
It's yeah, namespaces. It's just you know separate task sets. Um, you can keep calling the same plugin, but with different configurations. So you can actually right. have, call one plugin and then another plugin and the same plugin again with a different set of right. Yep. Uh, yeah. So I, you know, if I've got one set of files I want to ermagerd, and I've got another set of files I want to ermagerd, but I don't want to do them at the same time, it's namespace, and I can call them separately. <laughs> so that's what multitask boils down to. Uh, and then this, I'm going to add some new lines because this is gross. Kind of gross. Oops. Oh, hey, look at that. <laughs> Huh? It made these cool little happy face guy. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, okay. Ah, uh, that's really low down. Okay. So um, register multitask. I've got a description there, so if I put this into a plugin, you know, you have your description. And then the function calls, and when it comes in, it's going to come in um, that this object will have uh, your, have different attributes on it. And in this case, <coughs> the data, because multitask, is going to be everything inside your namespace section. Um, and then there's the special is options, which you can also have, um, and they've got a, you call this dot options as a method and you can put a, a associative array inside there and it'll you know do the whole overriding defaults thing for you and spit out an, an associative array you can use. Um, so I'm just taking in um, the file name for the destination and this is all backwards we'll start here. Uh, so using this grunt file read um, which is a helper function uh, to get the content of our source file um, uppercasing that, running it through translate, and then using grunt file write to spit it out into the destination file. So pretty straightforward, not very big file. Oops. So, and because that's not my um, my default method, because I still have the JS hint uglify in my default, I have to call it um, specifically. So there we go. I'll show you the um, what we're emigrating here. The best times, the worst times, uh, and then I'll show you the output here. Earth worse, the reverse Earth terms. Worse the reverse Earth terms. So um, as silly as that example is, it shows you. Oh, the camera. Just read it again out loud. Oh, you just want it louder outside. Yeah. Earth worse, the reverse Earth terms. Uh, <laughs> yeah, so as silly as that example is, it kind of just shows you the quick, uh, you know, quick introduction to how fast it is to write something that can, um, you know, have option sets, these namespace things, and uh, use the helper functions get and read and write stuff really fast. Um, and also, I kind of um, glazed over it, but uh, you're, I mean, you're basically not you basically you are in an instance of node so you can get at um, you know anything you want uh, that you would normally load up um, so like the grunt contrib uglify is loading uglify you know which is its all whole own thing so you can do anything you want uh, with existing modules so you have you know the extensibility of everybody's already wrote these program plugins and then you have the extensibility of there's just tons of stuff for node So, demo. Uh, so I guess wrapping it up, there's um, a huge repository of plugins that Grunt keeps track of. Um, the, <coughs> there's lots of useful ones. There's stuff to push things to S3. Um, there's stuff to make ASCII art out of sentences. Um, you know, everything from useful to just worthless. Uh, <laughs> So like, you know, Ermagerd falls in useful. And, the, <laughs> um, and there's, there's other great projects like uh, Gruntacon. Is that how you say it, Zach? You're a committer, so. Um, 
whatever. Which is which is a grunt set of grunt tasks that spins up a phantom JS and will take your SVG icons and um, embed them in uh, CSS files and then render PNG versions of them and like give you this whole package of um, you know fallbacks for SVG uh, icons, which is really cool, um, and that uses uses grunt. Um, huh? I'll show an example. Oh, okay. Here we go. Yeah, so more plugins. Hand it over. Unless you guys have questions. <laughs> All right, what, so what did you guys use for build, kind of a build system before Grunt? And why did you guys change over to Grunt? Um, you guys really, <laughs> the, only, um, the only thing we really use Grunt for a ton is Grunt Icon um, with Pack now. Uh, just because there's not anything equivalent, really, that, that does all that work for you. Um, and so, I mean, that's that and preparing for this presentation are the extent of my... This is what happens when you know. I learned this new language, JavaScript, for this. Uh, it's really great. You guys should check it out. <laughs> no, I mean, I, I've used, I mean, I don't know. I come from a, a more systems-y background, so, I mean, I make... Um, I've used rake files in the past. Um, I don't know. I'm not a heavy JavaScript author, so I don't... I used to use Ant back in the day. <laughs> that oh, sounds painful. Pack is Python, right? So Pack is Python. Is there uh, there's Fabric, which isn't really... I mean, it is kind of a... I don't know. Fabric is kind of this weird... It's more make file, but with SSH built into it, so... Um, I do a lot of stuff with Fabric for local. Um, or shell scripts, I don't know. I like low tech, I guess. So. All right.